Welcome to KJV Cafe, where the truths of God's Word come alive. Grab a hot cup of coffee or tea and spend some time learning about our Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. Listen now to Pastor Clark Covington of Heartland Community Baptist Church as he explores great insights from the Word of God. Thank you for joining me today. Today I want to speak about an issue I believe that is plaguing churches in our country, a, a, a starving for the word of God, an anemia, a spiritual anemia. What's anemia? It's a condition in which you lack enough healthy red blood cells to carry adequate oxygen to your body's tissues. Having anemia, according to Mayo Clinic, can make you feel tired and weak. There are many forms of anemia, each with its own cause. It can be temporary or long-term. It can range from mild to severe. Hmm. That spiritual anemia, that spiritual sickness, that, 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 that starving for the word of God, I believe is plaguing churches in America today. You know, it kind of reminds me of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 30. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Of course, the apostle Paul here is uh, referencing the Lord's Supper, and many people taking the Lord's Supper without understanding truly what it is or what Christ has done for them, specifically not understanding that Christ died for their sins, that it was a substitutionary death, and that when, when we think on the Lord and his body that was broken, of course the bones weren't broken, but his body, he was crucified on the cross for our sins, we should remember that gift of salvation, that gift of God, that gift that no man can earn with their works, uh, or even uh, praises. You know, all your praises don't earn you salvation. It was only by the blood of Christ that we're saved. And yet, in churches today, people are not rightly dividing. They're, forget rightly dividing, they're not even getting in the Word. Uh, you understand many modern churches have become areas of performance or entertainment or comedy or like a talent show, but they're not rightly dividing. They're not spending time in God's word. They're few and far between. Uh, I think the technical term for what I'm speaking of is uh, expository preaching. There's not enough expository preaching. What does that mean? I don't know. I believe it means exposing the word, getting into the word. Look, we need preachers and teachers to preach God's word, the whole counsel of God, his word. And today I just want to spend some time talking about this idea of starving for the word of God. Our text verse, interestingly enough, the Lord gave me this text verse, Romans 8 verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Wow, that's an interesting verse. We're talking about uh, churches and, and, and people being spiritually starved of the Word, not having the Word, not feeding on the Word, that there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. I mean, think of that verse. It's often mentioned uh, in the idea that we, our works don't save us or that we can't earn favor with God by what we do. It's often mentioned in just like rest in the Lord, be still and know that he is God. And it's a great verse. And we're, I'm very thankful for that verse. Uh, but it's an interesting part here in Romans 8, 1, that later, latter part of the verse, uh, it says there's there now no condemnation, they're not condemned, to them which are in Christ Jesus, okay, saved, right, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And so I believe the root cause of these anemic churches, the root cause of these preachers that don't, uh, that, are, that are preaching milk or, or, or uh, baby formula, not preaching the meat of the word, the root cause of this is people are walking after the flesh and not the Spirit. Now clarify here, I'm not speaking of salvation. I'm not speaking of those that are saved and not saved, and, and I'm not speaking of denominations. I'm just speaking generally here that, that churches today, are they're, they're, they're starving their congregation. Uh, the congregation is weak and sick because they are not in God's Word. And the reason why they're not in God's Word, I believe, as Romans 8, 1 points out, they're not walking after the Spirit, but after the flesh. 
Now, what does it mean as Christians to walk after the Spirit? Or how do we worship in the Spirit? Well, I believe the Spirit, capital S, is God, and that's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And I believe that we must at first here look as at Christ as the example. You know, he is the Word, and he was, uh, in his earthly ministry, constantly in the Word. Christ lived a life quoting Scripture, teaching Scripture, proving the validity of all Scripture. I mean, you know that. You know, when we study Jesus, we look in the Gospels, we read that red letter print, it's often mentioned, it is written, it is written, it is written. Well, where was it written? The Scriptures. Christ is quoting the Old Testament. He's quoting the Scriptures. What did they do in the temples? What did they, the Jews, do in the temples? Those, um, you know, God's chosen people who Christ was sent uh, to be their king and so forth, and they rejected, uh, they were reading the Scriptures. I mean, literally, you think of a Scripture, you might think of a scroll, right? As I understand it, they had scrolls. They'd They'd unroll that scroll there and they would read it. And then, you know, you would have one, like a Pharisee, read it to the congregation. Uh, and that was their form of temple worship, along with sacrifices and offerings and uh, trying to fulfill the law, which, of course, they never could fulfill. But Christ, he is the word and he was in the word and he was pointing out scripture. Uh, specifically, Christ mentions that all scriptures will be fulfilled. Matthew 5 Verse 18, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. How can you know what will be fulfilled if you aren't in the word? Jesus says it's all going to be fulfilled. How can we know? Amen. How can we know if we're not in the word? We can't know. Think about that. Have you ever thought about that? Somebody that goes to church and just says, oh, I don't like reading my Bible or I don't want to spend time in my Bible. Have you ever thought about the idea that that spiritual ignorance is dangerous for them, that they don't understand that it's all going to be fulfilled and they don't know what because they're not in the word? How about this? It can't be broken. Christ speaking, John 10, uh, John chapter 10, verse 35, if he called them gods into whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, the scripture cannot be broken. What does that mean? It, it, it's all going to be fulfilled, and it's not uh, false. It's never wrong. It cannot be broken. And we see this throughout so many different layers. You could have a whole message on this or a series of messages, but generally speaking, the Scripture can't be broken as in um, prophecy has been fulfilled. It's never wrong. It's completely accurate. As in when you read the Bible and study the Bible, those truths, those spiritual truths, uh, the things that you get from God's word, they cannot be described. They cannot be ex explained. And you say, oh, that is so true. Oh, I've never thought of it like that. Well, the word cannot be broken. The scripture cannot be broken. Christ explained that, that it's all perfect and true. How can we know what won't be broken if we don't know the word? As Christians, you know, we have to be in God's word to understand what will be fulfilled and understand what truth can't be broken. And again, how can we as a congregation in a church understand God, come to know God, be, be able to get close to God, you know, to draw nigh to him? How can we do that if we don't understand what's in his word? Amen. That starts at the top. That starts with the preachers. That was kind of my first instinct uh, when developing this message is we need more Bible preaching preachers, Bible teaching preachers, excuse me, Bible preaching preachers. That's a good one. Bible teaching preachers. We need more of that. We need less showmanship and more in the word, more studying, more explaining, more ex expository preaching. There you go. I said that SAT word a couple times. Uh, next here, as Christians, we say we love Christ, do we not? What does it mean to be a Christian? It means to be Christ-like. They were called Christians at Antioch, Christ-like. But what does Christ say to do if we love him? Again, if you want to be like someone, so much like someone that you're referred to, to, to them as part of that group, then you love them. You know, people, I want to be a Covington. My last name is Covington. My wife's name is Covington, and we want to be close together. I love my wife, right? I, I, we do things together, amen, as a family, right? We love each other. Christ says, if you love me, you'll do what? John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. When did Jesus command people to know scripture? Again, we're talking about starving the church, starving people, not letting them feed on the word of God. 
Well, there's many examples, I believe, in the Bible, but one clear one here is the gospel. Mark 16, 15, and he, being Jesus, said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, to every creature. 1 Peter 3, 15, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready, ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So firstly here, how can we go all go to all the world and preach the gospel if we don't understand what the gospel is? I mean, how can you spread the gospel if you don't understand it? Uh, I've been taught uh, my years in church, uh, in independent fundamental churches, studying God's word. I've been taught that the gospel is clearly explained in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And as I've done my own studies, the gospel is clearly explained in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And I think it's important to understand or to discern or delineate the idea that, yes, John three sixteen explains what Jesus did, right? Uh, how God had sent Jesus to die for our sins. But 1 Corinthians 15, 1, 4 explains the gospel in true clarity and helps us understand the substitutionary death, the idea that Jesus died for us, that God's hand was upon Jesus and raised him from the dead on the third day, that he was seen by over 500 and that he ascended up to the right hand of the father where he is today. We understand the full gospel. Uh, and, and also in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, it mentions according to the scriptures. Again, so it promotes or helps us understand the importance of God's word. But how can we spread the gospel if we don't clearly understand it? Uh, you know, in fact, there's uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, 1, 4, it also mentions, now that I think about it, uh, a, a, a section there, if you believed in vain. What that means is if you don't understand. Uh, you know, hopefully you didn't believe in vain. Hopefully you understand, right? So again, P Paul here is illuminating uh, the idea, magnifying the idea that we must understand the gospel to share the gospel. And so Christ, he was and is our, our hope and our salvation, and he understood his role. He understood what he had to do. You're listening to KJV Cafe. As you learn the great truths in God's word, we encourage you to take the verses mentioned in this episode and study them. Trusting God will open your eyes to a deeper understanding of himself. Now here's Pastor Clark with the rest of today's message. He was and is the word and lived by the word. He was the fulfillment of the word. How can you be Christ-like without the word? Uh, so, you know, First Peter 3.15, as I mentioned, the idea of be always able being to give an answer of, uh, you know, when man asks our reason for hope, if someone says, hey, you know, in the world so dark, what's your hope? You know, if you're not in the word, you cannot articulate. You might be able to say Jesus or God or my church or whatever. But you, if you're not in the word, you cannot articulate clearly, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that your hope is in Jesus, that your hope is in him, that you, by being uh, blood bought by him, by the blood of Jesus Christ, now that you are saved, your hope is in him. And that when God looks down on you, he doesn't see you. He sees Jesus. And Jesus is perfect. He is the perfecter. He is the author. He is the one that's going to save us. He's the one that has saved us. We are now citizens in heaven, on and on and on. You don't have to know every element of the Bible, but you have to know enough to understand clearly what Jesus did for you. And again, how can you be mature in the word if you don't? Not just, think about this too. Uh, you know, you you have this idea of the fundamentals of, of Christianity. You say, okay, I understand I'm saved. I'm saved because Jesus died for me. I get that, right? Okay, you've got that, and you're going to be able to share that, all right? But if you're in a church that's not in God's Word, that's anemic, that's starving for the Word, if you're not feasting on God's Word, how will your faith grow? I mean, think about that. A strong faith depends on the Word, you know, Romans 10, 17, I mean, our text verse is Romans 8, just a few chapters down, Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we learn in Romans 10, 17, a very simple truth that our faith comes by being in God's word. How can you grow your faith if you're deaf to God's word? 
Faith is so important. You say, well, I can be a Christian. I don't really need strong faith. I can just, you know, be a Christian. Well, no. Faith is the fundamental part of Christianity. Think about this. It's the only thing we actually do ourselves. We're not saved by our works. We're not saved by our money. We're not saved by our pedigree. We're not saved by anything other than what? Believing. Abraham was justified by faith. Hebrews 11.6 says something very interesting. Every, listen, Hebrews 11, 6, listen to this. But without faith, it is impossible to please God, please him. Okay. 11, Hebrews 11, 6, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Well, that's a loaded verse. I love that verse so much. Number one, did you know you can please God? What's the inverse of this? But without faith, it's impossible to please him. Well, if you have faith, then you are pleasing him. Are you not? Amen. So we have faith, we please God. And then it says, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, he is what? That he's God. And that he's a rewarder, a rewarder. We like rewards. I like rewards of them that what? That diligently seek him. How can you diligently seek him? How can you have God's favor? How can you be rewarded by God if you're not in his word? It's his word. It is the, the fundamental of our, our faith. So what we have to understand is not only to be Christ-like is to get in God's word and feast on God's word, but also our faith depends on God's word. So if someone came to me and said, look, I'm struggling. I just don't feel close to God. I, I pray and it's just not, not, not helping that much. And I can't get away from this sin or that. The number one answer is get in God's word, study God's word, become obsessed with God's word, be a student of God's word. And guess what will happen? As you get into God's word, your faith will grow. And so if you see someone that has a very strong faith that really believes God's going to work miracles and you're sitting here saying, how can that person have that kind of faith? I bet they spend a lot of time in God's word. And by getting into God's word, as Romans 10, 17 tells us, Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So we have what, what it means to be Christ-like, to be in the word, to feast on the word, to understand the word, the truths of the word, what's going to happen from the word, everything. Then we understand our faith grows by being in the word. But how about this? Not only does that happen, but also, you know, our faith, our, our, our whole Christian walk is acceptable to God by being in his word. It's acceptable. We see Without faith, it's impossible to please him. And we see that faith grows by hearing and the hearing of the word of God. And so we want to please God. And we know that we have to get in his word to please him. And we have to understand the consequences of doing things our own way and not pleasing God. Genesis 4, 4 through 5 explains Cain and Abel a little bit. And Abel also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So Abel brought an offering to God that was acceptable, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect as in God had not respect to Cain's offering. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. He was very angry. And that's a whole other thing that when we give a proper offering to the Lord, uh, we have peace and, and, and joy and so forth. Uh, but more importantly, Cain did things man's way, right? And just think in terms of a church service, think of a lot of entertainment, a lot of singing, a lot of personal anecdotes, a lot of uh, maybe light shows, all these things, but, but not getting in the scripture. That's man's way, right? And what happened to Cain? He was a vagabond. He was cast off. He was lost, right? And uh, Abel gave an acceptable offering and God accepted his offering. And so if we want to do things the way God has outlined for us, and we want to grow in the Lord, then we must feast on his word. It's acceptable. It's part of God's program. What man does is they say, let, let me do it my way. Like Cain, you know, what's comfortable, what's easy for me, what's simple, what's fun. And that's the, that's the result of a weak, anemic Christianity. Going back here to the verse I mentioned in the beginning, 1 Corinthians 11.30, for this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. What's the cause? What's the cause of this spiritual anemia, this spiritual weakness? The cause is not being in the Word, and the root of that cause is man's pride, man's arrogance, man's ability to say, you know what, despite what this Word may tell me, I'm not going to do it. You know, and, and if you really think about that, it's not just maybe pride or arrogance at the start. It's ignorance, right? It's, 
it's that idea that maybe we don't truly have that faith, that we, that we look at the book. And I mean, when you look at the Bible, do you look at it like a gold mine? Do you look at it like the all the more riches than in the Federal Reserve, more riches that's in all the world? Do you look at it as just the most beautiful, most wealthy, most rich text ever to be written? Or do you look at it as ah, God's word, it, you know, it's, it's complex and I don't have time for it. I'll go do dot, dot, dot. How does that make the creator of the earth feel? Think about this. Someone picks up God's word, thinks about reading it and says, no, I'm going to go watch this filthy entertainment. I'm going to go watch something on Netflix that's crude and curses God. I'm going to go to the yoga studio and practice some pagan religion that I don't even know is pagan because I'm not in his word. You know, I'm going to skip church to go out with friends and go shopping and practice materialism or I'll covet things. You know, it grieves the Lord, not that you are living or whoever is doing this that is living afar off from him uh, and and, 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 in, 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 in knowledge, but in ignorance. It grieves the Lord that you're following into the snare or the trap of the enemy of the devil. You know, you you read or you hear preachers talk about the bondage of sin, the wages of sin, how the devil keeps people in sin. And you start thinking about bondage, wages, chains. You're like, oh, well, that doesn't describe, you know, going to this concert. It's fun. You know, I got a T-shirt and then, you know, they only cursed God a couple times and there was only some nudity or whatever it is. No, it's not just the sin. It's that you're staying far from God. You're not close to God. You don't understand your spiritual maturity. You don't understand what God's gifted you with. You don't understand his calling for your life. And how do you get all that? You get it by getting into the word, you know, getting from the milk to the meat. You know, Hebrews 5, 9 through 14 describes this. And being made perfect, he became the author, author, this is Jesus, of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when, for the time, you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Well, what the writer of Hebrews is saying here very clearly is that people, the church, is they're dull of hearing. They can't hear. And what do we understand from Romans 10? That hearing, the faith cometh by hearing and hearing of the word of God. Well, they're dull hearing. They're not hearing the word of God. And when they should be teachers, that's our motto at our church, that we, that we should have people understand the scriptures so well they're able to teach them. Because if you can teach it, you know it, right? That when they should be teachers, they're not teachers. They're in need of milk. They're like babies. Think of a child. A child can't make its own milk. They can't feed themselves. They can't even sometimes hold their head up. They can't walk. They're a little baby. And that's what the writer of Hebrews is saying uh, of these of the church, of these people, that they, 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 don't, that they can't even take the strong meat. All they can take is milk. And that they are unskillful in the word of righteousness. That's not good. You know, we say we love the Lord. Uh, we say that we want to be able to discern good from evil. You know, that we want to rightly divide. We, we, we say we want to be Christ-like. We say that we love the Lord and we want to grow closer to him, but we won't give his word an honest try. We won't seek him. We won't follow that scripture in Hebrews that says that we must believe that he is who he says he is, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I'm sorry, but a lot of Christians today are not diligently seeking God in the word. They, again, will go through their own practices. They'll say, well, I'll sing a hundred songs. Take this example. Imagine a room, 10 by 10 white room, a standard room, and there's a stool in the middle of the room, and you go and sit in the room one day, and someone comes in and sings 100 songs, okay, 100 Christian songs, and they walk out. And the next day you go in, you sit on a stool, and you read 100 chapters of the Bible, and somebody comes in and and helps you work through those chapters and understand them. Which exercise is going to help you grow and get closer to God? Think about that. I have nothing against Christian music. I think Christian music is so important in edifying and praising God. But without the word, without the preaching and teaching of the word, without the rightly dividing of the word, you cannot grow in faith. You cannot grow in knowledge. The book does not say, think about this. The book does not say, just sing songs to God, praise God in your own way, using your own talents and gifts, and you'll grow in faith. It doesn't say that. It says faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. Now, where do the modern churches get off with this kind of um, 
program or uh, uh, episode of just a lot of singing and praise and a little tiny tidbit on scripture. I believe they pull a lot of this out of Psalms. You know, in Psalms, it talks about praising God with song and music. And there's nothing wrong with that. I love the Psalms and I, I get that. And we should do that. We should do that. We should sing to the Lord all day long, but we also should pray without ceasing. And most importantly, we should rightly divide in his word. And that is what makes us strong Christians. Going back to this idea of being anemic. You know, if you're anemic, it causes you this lack of oxygen, this tiredness, this sleepiness this weakness, the sickliness about you. How do you get away from that as a Christian? How do you get victory over the devil? You get it by digging into the word. You get it by staying in the word. You get it by saturating your mind in the word. And you know what? As fleshly people, we're not programmed to do that. So you have to kind of double down on it. I get an email with scripture in the morning. I listen to preaching uh, uh, on my phone. I listen to Bible study on YouTube. I, I, I go through uh, my morning uh, devotion time reading the Bible. I, yes, listen to Christian music. And you just all, all doing these things all the time, all the time. What happens is you saturate yourself in the word and it permeates. It gets in there. Amen. It finally gets in there. And that's what we must do. We must feed on God's word. And I'll give you an example from where I'm at where I'm studying God's word, I'm preaching God's word, I'm trying to live for the Lord and trying to do what he's called me to do. And the Lord's been teaching me about spiritual authority, right? And spiritual authority, this idea that God has given us authority over the principles, uh, the, the, the devilish powers in the world, right? And how this authority allows us to have victory over the devil in, in, in sharing his word and preaching his word and living for him. Now, now, that is something that a babe in Christ that's on the milk will not be able to grasp. They will not be able to understand that. In fact, if you get in the book of Romans and you don't really have that strong foundation, it's going to be real hard to discern that. And yet by understanding and studying God's word, I'm now understanding what this, this authority means. And it's a help. It's freeing to me. It gives me more peace. It helps me to understand. It helps me to preach more. It helps me to share Christ's love and, and God's spiritual strength and his sovereignty more and more. It helps me to understand the world more and more. Do you see when we get in God's word, we change our behaviors. That's why this is so important because we're better soul winners. Uh, we, we're, we're closer to God. We're, we're better when we pray. We're, we're better church members. We're better everything when we feast on his word. And what's the opposite of that? When we're starved for his word, when we don't understand his word, we don't rightly divide his word, we are not effective. We are, as it's mentioned in Hebrews, dull of hearing. We are unskillful in the word of righteousness. We want to be skillful. What do we need to do? We need to get in the word. Amen. We need to get into uh, all of scripture, especially uh, Paul's epistles, which are the epistles uh, written for the Gentiles. That's us. Amen. And we need to study it and understand what it tells us so well that we can share with others so well that we can teach others. And as we do that, guess what? Our faith grows everything gets better. I believe the Lord will grow the church. He's not going to let that Bible-believing, Bible-studying church just dissolve. And if it did, it would be to get them spread out across the earth to preach more. But I believe he's going to lift it up, and he's going to keep it. And even when all hell throws fiery darts against it, it's still going to shine. It's still going to be a city on a hill lit up for people to see. And they're going to say, that's Jesus Christ. That's salvation. That's everything I need to know. That's God's word. You understand? He is the word. He is the word. And so how dare we ignore the word? How dare we become so used to just song and dance and other things that we don't get in the word and study the word and rightly divide the word? Please, please let this motivate you to, to, to understand God's word, to study God's word, to double down on God's word. You'll never regret it. You don't meet a Bible-believing Christian that says, oh, I just wish I read the Bible less. No, no. It's more, more, more. It's uh, You can't get enough of it. We eat three times a day. We should be studying God's word at least three times a day. I mean it. I believe it. I teach it. I try to live it. I'm trying to pass it on to our children and, and our children to their children that as we understand that God preserved this word for a reason, and as we get into it, we can truly be effective for Christ. I thank you so much for listening today. And my prayer is that you will take this message, share it with others, and continue to live for him in all that you do. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for visiting the cafe today. Our goal is to inspire you with the truth and depth of God's Word in a straightforward manner. Do you know Jesus? You can today. 
Visit kjvcafe.com to learn more about God's great plan of salvation for all of mankind. Until next time, remember, as Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 puts it, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Pastor Clark here. Thank you so much for listening today to this radio broadcast. I just would like to remind you that if you like what you heard and you want to listen to more, visit kjvcafe.com. That's kjvcafe.com. We've got great uh, messages on there. We've got uh, YouTube videos on there. We've got audio recordings on there. And there's uh, links to our social media. You can even send me an email if you want to. Uh, But just check it out if you have time, kjvcafe.com. And again, thank you so much for listening. 